Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, the 5.5 inch supersized version of the Galaxy S3. Now, of course, the distinguishing feature with the Note series is this integrated stylus, which has some software optimized for the stylus technology. And of course, we'll explore that once we get it out of the box. But th again, this is a 5.5 inch display, Super AMOLED display, very high quality, higher quality than the one in the GS3. This has a resolution of 720 by 1280, which is actually identical to the Galaxy S3, but it's spread over 5.5 inches versus 4.8. So that gives us a pixel density of 265 ppi, which is pretty good. So around here, we can take a look at some of the specs. Now this is powered by a quad-core Exynos processor, uh, operating at 1.6 gigahertz versus 1.4 in the GS3. This is also optimized for LTE, so you do have LTE in this phone in addition to quad-core, which isn't the case with the GS3. You either get quad-core or LTE, but I believe they're changing that recently with a updated version of the GS3. So anyway, moving on, we have a not, or an 8 megapixel autofocusing camera, which is good for 1080p HD at 30 frames per second. We also have a 1.9 mirror facing camera. Uh, we have that S Pen, of course, and we have multi-view, so we can pop out windows we can look at windows side by side technology we've kind of seen on the GS3 and the note 10.1 I've reviewed previously we have full HD recording and playback we have a 3100 milliamp battery which makes this one of the largest batteries you can buy next to the uh, uh, the uh, droid Razer max from Motorola and the other big news here is that this is powered by Android 4.1 or jelly bean all right so let's go ahead and crack into our phone here Pop the lid. There is the Galaxy Note 2. We have a little tab here to lift it up. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. It looks like we have a piece of plastic here. So we have a little tray under here with some of the accessories. So we have our quick start guide, as well as some additional literature here, including advertisements for the Galaxy Tab series of tablets and some warranty information. Now, because this is the UK version, I have a UK plug here with those uh, fold out prongs here. So this pops out and you can snap this in. And there you go, there's your UK plug. Of course, I can't use this in the US, but you can charge this with a computer, which is what I intend to do. We have our USB cable, which is white. We also have our headphones here, which includes a remote control and microphone with replaceable ear tips. And we have a baggie full of ear tips, so you can find the right one to fit your ears. And we have our gigantic 3100 milliamp battery, which we're gonna install on the phone. So let's get to the phone. So here is our phone wrapped in plastic. We're just gonna peel this off here. So you can see some information here on how to pop off the back cover. So on the front, we'll just lift up our piece of plastic here. And there is our phone. So the first thing I want to do is pop in the battery. So we have a little thumbnail tab here to pop off the back panel. So it pops right off. So we're just gonna drop in our battery, it snaps into place. So with our back cover removed, we can also see that the inside of the back cover has our NFC technology built into the cover here with those electrical connections to the phone right there. And up here we have our SIM card this is a micro SIM card as well as an SD expansion slot. This is micro SD, which supports cards up to 64 gigs like I have here. So you can expand storage quite a bit without spending extra. So this comes, store, this comes standard with 16 gigs internal storage. And if I just pop that in, I'm good for 16 plus 64 gig. All right, so I'm just gonna snap the back panel back on. So although it seems like a flimsy piece of plastic, once it's on the phone, it feels quite solid and rigid and doesn't creak at all. It just, that's just the same story with the Galaxy S3. Now the Note 2 is available in two colors, white or graphite, and more may be added in the future like the Galaxy S3, uh, but it's very similar in design to the Galaxy S3. We have this sort of glossy, slippery back panel here with this bezel along the edge. In this case, it's a very polished finish. It's not metal, it's still plastic, but the finish looks pretty convincing, it looks pretty nice. Uh, if we look closely, we can take a look at some of the hardware's features. So we have an eight megapixel autofocusing camera along with an LED flash. We also have our speaker down here, uh, which is positioned up here on the Galaxy S3. Back here, we have our our headphone jack as well as a noise cancellation microphone right next to that. Along the other side we have our volume rocker. Along the bottom we'll find a micro USB connector for charging and syncing. You can also use an adapter to output HD video to a television. We have a microphone here as well as our S Pen. So let's pop that out really quickly and show you that. So you can see it integrates nicely into the body of the phone. And the S Pen is larger this time with a larger button. And you can see we have a tip here, which is not capacitive. It uses Wacom technology, so it works a little differently than a capacitive pen, which also means there's additional features such as uh, pressure sensitivity and uh, proximity sensitivity as well. 
Also up here we have our power on button, our sleep wake button, as well as a thumbnail tab here for popping off the back panel. Now up front we have a 1.9 megapixel front facing camera as well as an ambient light sensor and proximity sensor as well as our earpiece. And we also have an LED indicator kind of hidden behind the bezel there, which lets you know if you have notifications. Now, along the bottom we have our physical home button as well as two backlit capacitive controls for Android which are invisible until lit. All right, so I've dimmed the lights. Now let's go ahead and boot this up and set it up for the first time. So I'm just gonna hold that power button and let it go. Now the Note 2 is very similar to the Galaxy S3. So we still have that TouchWiz user experience complete with a nature theme, which you can turn on and off. Uh, you can turn off those uh, water effects if you want as well. On the lock screen, you can launch a variety of apps, which you can change under settings. You can see they actually give us five here instead of just four like you get on the GS3. And you see those badges you hear for, you get for uh, text messages or other notifications like uh, voicemail. Uh, so if you want to launch any of these, just swipe up on them. It takes you right to the app. Uh, now, if we look at the home screen, again, very similar to the Galaxy S3. They give us seven by default. And uh, you can see, you can swipe through them. It's pretty quick with uh, Android 4.1. Everything operates very smoothly. You get tons of widgets, lots of apps. Uh, again, this is just the default interface. And you can edit this just by pinching in on them. You can see all of your home screens. And you can remove any, any of them just by tapping and holding them and taking them to the trash can. And you can add new ones if you want. Now, we also have our notification panel up here with our typical widgets and toggles. Uh, so we can toggle on Wi-Fi, GPS. We can mute the phone, lock the screen rotation, toggle on Bluetooth toggle on mobile data. We also have blocking mode, which is new. Uh, we're used to notifications, so you can turn off notifications globally, but blocking mode basically allows you to specify exactly what you want blocked, not just everything. You can block certain numbers or allow certain numbers in. You can control that under settings. You also have power saving mode, all share cast. So if you tap all share cast, it will scan your network for available devices that you can broadcast uh, audio, video to those devices. So this supports DLNA. Right now, I don't think I have anything on my network so I didn't find anything but that's one way of getting quick access to that information you also have sync so you can turn off Google sync also new with Android 4.1 is the ability to expand notification as well as information from Google now and of course we also have Google now in addition to s voice so let's test out Google now what's the weather like in New York today the forecast for New York today is 81 degrees with a chance of storm now you can also get to Google search just by tapping and holding the menu button. And you can do a voice search or tap it in. What's the weather like in Detroit? It's 66 degrees and overcast in Detroit. And we can also invoke S voice just by double tapping the home button. So what's the weather like in New York? Here is the weather for New York, New York. Now there are a few things S Voice can do that Google Voice currently can't do, and one of them is calendaring. So for example, make an appointment for this Saturday to celebrate my sister's birthday at 8 p.m. Should I save the following meeting to your calendar? Make an appointment for this Saturday at 8 p.m. to celebrate my sister's birthday. All right, so you can see Google can't quite handle those sort of tasks. Now looking at the basic home screen, we have home, context, S note, and messaging. If you want to get to more apps, just tap the more apps icon and you can have more apps here to drag and drop to your home screen. Now these are all the default apps, all the apps that have come included with the Note 2. A lot of them are Samsung apps. A lot of them are already on the home screen. Uh, we have Flipboard. Uh, we have an FM radio, so this international version does have an FM radio. I'm not sure if the U.S. versions will carry that. Usually they don't. We have Google+, Plus. we have the standard Android browser, Gaming Learning Hub, we have Music Hub, the Messenger app from Google, Google+, Plus. we have Maps, lots of other things here that are standard uh, with most Android devices, including Play Movies, the Play Store, Reader's Hub, uh, we have the phone app, as well as Paper Artist, which we'll explore a bit later. We have Navigation, we have a File Manager, we have Voice Recorder, we have Voice Search, which is the Google Voice Search. So if we tap that, it takes us right to Google Voice. So you can drop that icon in the home screen if you would like to do that as well. Uh, we also have a video player, and of course we have YouTube, Google, and Google Talk. 
Now, as soon as you remove the S Pen, this will activate some of the S Pen features. You can see that we actually get a new home screen complete with all of our S Pen optimized apps, especially notes here. Uh, this also works when you're in the lock screen. So if you lock your phone and you pull the S Pen out, you can see it jumps right to those features and you can launch a note and start uh, taking some notes. So here you can just write you can handwrite on it like you would like a piece of paper or you have lots of other functions. So up here, you can see if we tap on this, if I tap and hold it, I have several options here. I can draw shapes, I can uh, draw math functions, or I can start uh, using handwriting recognition. So let's try that out first. So if we tap that, we can type hello. You can see it translates that. And we can also do functions here, so we can go three, so there you go. We're going to insert that. And we can also do shape recognition. And you can even add to it after the fact. Now you also get an S Pen keyboard. So for example, if we bring up a web browser here and we go down here to our options, we can tap and hold on them and we get several options here. So we can do uh, handwriting recognition here and we can actually write this in so we can go cnn.com so it recognized cnn.com and it take me right there now another feature with the s pen is that it allows you to take clippings so for example i want part of this image here for an article or for something i want to post to a text message so all i have to do is click and hold that button on the s pen and sort of highlight the section i want you can see it will add it to my clipboard and i can take this to s note for example and there we go, I can open up a template here and load it in. So here I can resize it, move it around, and I can continue and add more and more clips as I want. Now S Pen also features something called Air View. So if you hold the S Pen in close proximity to the screen over, for example, in this case over the UI, you can see that it will tell me exactly what each of these buttons do, but you can also do other things. So for example, if I go to our photo gallery here. So in gallery, if I go to my images and I hover over them, you can see I get a little preview here. Now for watching the video here, you can see you can actually use that AirView feature to scrub the video. Now while we're in video mode, we can also explore some other features here unique to the Note 2. So we have this pop-out viewer here, which is not new, so you can continue to watch a movie, at least a movie loaded on the, on the Galaxy Note 2 itself, and you can resize it here and move it around and continue doing what whatever you want in the background. Now you can also see that your notification panel will change when you detach the pen so you get all the apps that are optimized for S Pen so you can launch them right away. Now we also have something called Quick Command which you can access from the notification panel when you've removed the stylus. So here you can uh, type a symbol to indicate an action. So for example a question mark will do a Google search, an at sign will do an email address and you follow that with a word. So for example if I do a Google search for Android I just do question mark Android and let it run. Now you can also create your own command. So for example, if we go up to the settings up here, uh, we have our commands panel here and these are all the predefined ones and you can add your own. So we can select an application. You can select any third party application you want. It doesn't have to be the ones that Android has included. So we can do the FM radio. Uh, so we can uh, open FM radio and all we have to do is Let's do F for FM radio. There you go. So I guess we can go to quick command and write F. And it will open the FM radio. Now you can also get to quick actions from anywhere on the device just by tapping and holding the S Pen and swiping up. You can see you get that gesture here. So here we have our quick actions. And again, if you uh, type in F here or write in F, you can see it will recognize that as open FM radio. Now there is one feature here which I can't show you in this video because it hasn't been pushed out yet to the early devices, which is this sort of multi-viewer. So you can launch apps side by side. You can control two apps at the same time in sort of a multi-window mode. This only works with Samsung apps, so you can't, for example, launch Chrome and launch another third-party note-taking app. You have to use the Samsung apps, such as the included internet browser and S Note, in order for that to work. But it's a feature that I've demonstrated on the Galaxy Note 10.1, and it works about the same. Now, under settings, we have some controls for our S Pen. So if we go to the S Pen panel, you can see we have dominant hand, so we can change that to left-handed or right-handed, and that will dictate the orientation of the keyboard 
and uh, number pads uh, for one-handed mode, which I'll show you a bit later. Uh, we also have pen attached or detached sounds. So you can turn that off or on or change the sound. Uh, we also have open pop-up note. So if you enable this, every time you take the pen out of its silo, you get this little pop-up note here, which, which you can take notes on and you can reposition it. So this will appear no matter what you're doing, whether you're on the phone or on a web browser. Uh, you also have battery saving mode, so if you enable this, it will stop scanning for the presence of the S Pen, which requires more, more battery power. You also have S Pen Keeper, which will basically, if you leave the pen on the ground or somewhere on the table and start moving the phone around, it will warn you with a notification and pop-up message. We also have Air View, which you can toggle on and off. You also have Sound and Haptic Feedback, which I don't like, so I tend to turn that off. You also have your Quick Command Settings, which I've just explored earlier. Now something also unique to the Note 2 is one-handed operation. So you can find that under settings here. So you can tap one-handed operation. And you have several toggles here you can toggle on and off. And this works with whether you're left-handed or right-handed. So you want to specify that under settings as well. Uh, but basically what this will do, if we take a look at the preview here, is that it will align certain keyboards and keypads to left-hand or right-hand users so that you can continue to use the device with one hand. So that's kind of a nice... Uh, compromise for people who are concerned about the one handability of this phone. Now the camera app is pretty familiar here, very full feature, typical of the Samsung TouchWiz user interface. So you can toggle between camera or video mode here just by swiping the toggle here. So in camera mode you have something called burst shots. So if you just happen to hold the shutter release, we'll take up to 20 photos in rapid succession. Now on the left, we have all of our controls here, which we can rearrange just by tapping and holding them and moving them around. And you can see we have lots of other options, which we can also drag here. When we're done, we can just drop into place. So our flash settings are pretty familiar here. Turn it off, on, or set it to auto. You also have scene mode, which or shooting mode, which has lots and lots of options. You can do best photo, which will take eight photos in rapid succession, and you can pick the best one you want. Best faces also works the same. Face detection, you also have panorama mode. Share shot, which uses Wi-Fi direct to share photos with other uh, compatible devices like Samsung devices. HDR, you have photo Buddy Photo Share, which recognizes the people in your photos and automatically shares them with those people. You also have the beauty shots, smile shots, and low light shots. You also have effects here, so you can change the effects of the camera here. So you can see the camera will change here in live view. And we have our settings here, which brings us back to lots and lots of options here. Uh, so you can change your effects, you can change your exposure value manually, which I really like here. So you have a little slider here, and you can change that manually. Of course, it does it automatically if you want. Looks like I have an effect here I don't want. But uh, anyway, you, get, you can also change your resolution here. All right now I'm at maximum. You can change your ISO levels. Right now it's at auto. You can change your metering to uh, matrix, center weighted or spot, outdoor visibility, auto contrast, guidelines, auto share shot, anti-shake, so you do have stabilization, GPS tagging, contextual file names. Uh, you can take photos using voice. So I guess you can take a photo while using the voice. So let's try that on. Let's try that off. Shoot. There you go. So that does work. Now in terms of quality, this camera shoots very good stills. This is definitely one of the better smartphone cameras I've used. This really falls in line with the iPhone 5 and the Galaxy S3. Again, both are 8 megapixel cameras with pretty good lenses and good software. So you can get a lot of detail. You can really zoom in and see just how sharp this camera is. Now images also look very sharp and very clear. You can really zoom in and see a lot of detail. So uh, color balance looks good, white balance, exposure all look very good. So you don't get really deep contrasts or overexposed uh, lights. Uh, definitely one of the better cameras I've used on any smartphone. It really falls in line with the Galaxy S3 and the iPhone 5. Really not much uh, difference there. Uh, certainly the software helps as well. So you get uh, excellent video in particular. Video looks very sharp. Uh, no artifacting. Excellent color reproduction with nice balance between the highs and low lights. Uh, the camera focuses pretty quickly. You can get a lot of detail. You're really close, especially for those macro shots. Definitely one of the better cameras I've used for a smartphone. Now, if we look at the synthetic benchmarks of the Note 2 versus the GS3, the Note 2 is one of the most powerful Android devices out there right now. So we get a score of 6831 versus 5845 on the GS3. Now, in terms of the Geekbench scores, you can see that the Note 2 screams ahead of the GS3 and the iPhone 5.
Now, just to give you an idea of the size comparison between the Note 2 and the other phones, we have our GS3 and we have our iPhone 5. So that's 4.8 and 4 inches. So 5.5 is definitely a very big foam. This felt big to me. This really feels big to me. But it's not, um, it's not impossible. So I can still hold it in my hand. I can almost operate it with one hand, but of course I have very large hands, but it feels a little uncomfortable. You definitely have to loosen your grip in order to use the foam. So you really have to kind of move your fingers all the way back in order to reach it. But it gets the job done, but it's pretty much a two-handed phone it's not very it's not entirely a one-handed phone but you could get by with it now this large super amoled display does look amazing so we get deep contrast with very vibrant colors and this time it's even wider and brighter than the gs3 so they've been able to improve performance overall uh, so you get excellent off-axis viewing and you have pretty high pixel density not up to iphone 5 specs with 326 ppi but at 265 ppi it's pretty good so even with very small text if we zoom in here hopefully it focuses for me you can see we can continue to read the text even though it's really zoomed out so you can see pretty good clarity there now in terms of how fast this phone feels, it's definitely the smoothest phone I've ever used. It feels much faster than my GS3, which has some evident frame dropping or lagging on Android 4.0. With, but with Android 4.1 on this phone, with those impressive specs, I mean 2 gigs of RAM and 1.6 gigahertz on the uh, processor, you definitely have a high performing phone. So everything works perfectly well with this phone. You definitely don't feel any evidence that this phone is in need of additional horsepower. Uh, so definitely one of the best experiences I've had, especially with a TouchWiz device, which tends to be be much more laggy than a bare uh, uh, ne Android experience. So for example, the Nexus phone uh, with Android 4.1 is one of the smoothest Android experiences you can get, and this actually comes pretty close. Now the other big story here is because you have a large phone, you also have a large battery. So even though you have a larger screen with higher specs, that uh, battery is still good for 35 hours of talk time. So that's impressive since most phones will average about eight hours. So that's definitely on the high end side and makes this one of the largest battery capacity phones in the market. So in conclusion, I definitely think the Note 2 is an interesting product for a number of reasons, but for me, the most interesting is that large, high-quality OLED screen. I definitely really like it, as well as the impressive internal specs and Android 4.1, which makes this a very smooth-performing phone. You also have that enormous battery, uh, which is great for excellent battery life. Uh, since most smartphones kind of struggle in this in this regard, it's nice to have a large phone with a large battery to get you through the day and then some. Uh, the stylus for me is less interesting, although it certainly has some interesting use cases. I haven't really found a need for it. Uh, but for me, that just happens to be a nice bonus, which hides kind of discreetly in the phone. It doesn't really need to be used. At least it's there if you want to use it. So that's something to consider. But for me, the large screen, large battery, and impressive internal specs and software make this phone a very interesting product to look at. So that's going to do it for me, guys, in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.